What is going on today guys, welcome back to another ATS video and today we are going to be doing a little bit of a kind of tutorial on where to find the infamous Tucson racetrack. Now currently I'm in my racing truck, it's a Kenworth T680 I believe is the exact uh, model number. Um, as you can see it's wearing a Stars and Stripes livery and has full hub covers on all, f however many wheels. Um, all 10 wheels, something like that. Um, and it's also a single cab with the full arrow set up here. Um, so, so, what we're going to do is we're going to find the track. So, the place you want to check, sorry, that was my phone that just fell on the floor. Um, so, oh crap, I'm in Fresno again. <laughs> Alright then, well, we're going to make the, we're going to quick travel. So, if you're not in Tucson already, you make sure you go to uh, Tucson. So, my actual um, high mileage truck, my 115,000 mile truck is currently there. Already, so we're going to click here. Quick travel. Yes. All right. I literally just did a drive to drive all the way down there, and I get in the truck, and it takes me all the way back to Fresno. <sighs> this game. So let's talk about wheel setups real quick. Now, if you remember, I mentioned I wanted to get a new wheel eventually, and I think I've decided to go with the Logitech G920 as the future roast tires wheel setup for the Xbox One and PC, while the Driving Force GT will remain here for the PS2 and PS3, and I plan on getting a Hori Racing Wheel Apex for the uh, PS4. As I've, as, like, as I've said previously, the PS4 is not entirely mine, so was, I don't feel like it's worth forking out the money to get a G29 or something like that. Alright, so the Tucson racetrack, the easiest way to get there is to go down here by the bitumen. Um, there's multiple ways to get here, but this is by far the easiest way. It's an 11 mile drive, so I'm going to time lapse this bit while I get over there. Alright, so as you can see, we really made that trip kind of quick. So there are two roads to get there. Uh, there's the long road, and then there, here's this little really tight path you can take to get there. Now, for demo purposes, uh, just for, well, really just for fun, I'm going to get on the long road, because why not? I'm running a 7-speed Allison 4700 transmission in this thing, so it's got a bit more extra pull than the 6-speeds I usually use on say my 115,000 mile Peterbilt and most of my other trucks I actually this is my first time driving the 7 speed so I actually really like it and this road right here this would be good for like a road race of some sort or a road rally in say the Skodas and multiplayer or something like that um, and I think me and Michael actually have driven the Skodas on this road before not on camera uh, but it is hectic as you can see here, I'm getting quite some speed. And uh, hopefully, speaking of wheel setups, the G920 I, I'm planning on getting. Hopefully, I, I've seen uh, from videos I've watched on it, it's not very loud. And the only complaint is the brake pedal. And I'm going to bet it's probably going to be a preference thing. I'm probably not going to care as much. Alright, so we've reached the end of the road here. So you're probably thinking to yourself, how in the world, there's no track, right? Well, that's where you'd be mistaken. So, as you can see here, unless they further patched it, nope, they didn't. I can just drove right through those things. All right, so you come across a hidden street here, and you just drive on up over here. And there's actually a couple of really neat goodies back here that I don't know if this if this area was cut out and was never meant to be in the game in the first place. Or if this is going to be some part, of, some sort of hidden DLC, 
Now you do actually get an achievement for this, which is what makes me kind of question it. So there's a repair station off to my left that I just passed. There's also a gas station with obviously AI cars being here as well. So you can probably thinking to yourself, what in the world is going on, right? There's a couple of motorcycles sitting out front. And there is trucks all over the place. This is actually the first time I've been here in single player. So this is it, the secret racetrack in Tucson, Arizona. It's literally a truck racetrack here. There's no other way to explain it. Now, I've done countless videos and live streams here, but I've never actually shown you guys the actual track. Now, uh, I really want to get a map made for this course and actually dissect it. So whenever I get the H shifter on the G920, I can kind of already know what I'm doing, so I don't have to focus on changing gear as much, or I can focus more on changing gear. Because basically, if I get the G920 like my plan is, I will be using the full clutch and eight shifter setup. Now, those of you who've been watching for a while know that after I got my Logitech Driving Force GT calibrated for the computer usage, uh, I unlocked its full potential to 900 degrees of turning radius. Uh, I started using the sequential shifter instead of the paddles, which I used when I had the 270 degree stock setup on this thing. So. Of course, now I can control the truck a lot better than 900 degrees. I think ATS requires 900 degrees of rotation in order for this game to work properly. Um, but yeah, uh, this track doesn't seem to really like the 7-speed as much. Now, the 7-speed has a lot of torque in comparison to the 6, but it's definitely not a big fan of the uh, getting pushed into 7th on this course. So as you can see, I'm going to go in 7th, and I'm going to take the same line I would if I was in the 6-speed trucks like my old race truck I used to drive which was actually another Kenworth I just can't remember I think it's like a W900 or something like that now you can t oh I took that a little too tight but you see after that even six gears kind of just a Y so you downshift into fifth this is really the one corner you really have to downshift on when I was running out here track laps and stuff in the uh, W900 or something like that uh, I was doing all sorts of crazy stuff with that truck you, uh, we, uh, me and Michael actually raced the same truck, and we tried to decide whether the wheel was faster than the controller, and I think we established the wheel was faster. Um, so, if you're wanting to set better lap times, once you get used to it, a wheel is more, if you feel better driving with a wheel than you will a controller on this game after you've gotten used to it. And do recommend? Do I recommend steering wheel controllers in general for PC? If you're playing a driving game of any sort, especially ATS, this is one reason why I love playing ATS so much. It's one of the very few games where I can play on a big map such as the southwestern coast of the U.S. with a wheel controller because this Driving Force GT is a set as a 10-year-old wheel. It's been 10 years since this thing entered production, um, and entered production in 2007 around the release of Grand Turismo 5 Prologue. That's how long it's been. And it's not compatible with my PS4, which is where I have the crew. And of course it's not compatible with my Xbox One. I mean, oh my goodness. Oh, I saved that crap. That was pretty sick. But uh, the Driving Force GT is probably one of my favorite wheels. It's probably one I would recommend to any beginner if they weren't so expensive. Now the reason I say that is in 2011 when I bought this specific Driving Force GT, I paid $120. And which, the more I think about it with the prices of the non-force feedback wheels that are currently available, such as the uh, Thrustmaster Ferrari 45A Spider Wheel and the Hori Racing Wheel Apex, um, the two cheapest wheels on the Xbox One and PS4 respectively, uh, not having force feedback. I always felt like this was the cheap wheel that everyone would go with and I always thought it was kind of standard that all steering wheel controllers had force feedback. When I heard that the uh, Hori and the Thrustmaster 458 Spider were running on bungee cord, I was actually pretty astonished. But anyway, back to the whole price thing. So on eBay right now, you can get a used Driving Force GT, which is probably in about the same condition as mine, for $462. That's what I saw one for recently. And that's insane. Now this is probably for collectors. Uh, I doubt anyone's still using these besides me, of course, um, as their primary wheel. Uh, it's the same story with the G27. Uh, Michael has decided that if he can get a steering wheel controller anytime soon, he wants to get a G27 instead of the G29. Uh, which uh, the only problem is is how expensive they are. Because um, I've seen some go for upwards of a thousand dollars, and 
I don't know anyone who in their right mind would pay that much for an obsolete racing wheel unless you're a collector. But yeah, so thank you guys again for tuning in to this video of the Secret Race Track in Tucson and listening to me banter on about steering wheel controllers. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you guys next time. Take care, guys.